My name is Ruth Gillen. I'm a Deputy Head of Science. I'd like to welcome you to our Combined Science Parents Pupils. On the screen now, you can see an activity that we refer to as a do now, because we ask the students to do the activity now. As soon as they walk into the room, this should be on the screen. So I'd like to, you to give it a go. I would like you to name as many scientific keywords as you can relating to the images above. A challenge would be to build upon these uh, keywords with any relevant information linked to the images. This is an accessible activity, so all students can give it a go. We'll refer back to it at the end. The course I'd like to introduce you to is called Combined Science. This is the science that all students will complete unless they opt in to do triple. We follow the Edexcel GCSE 9 to 1 specification. The qualifications are 100% examination and they're sat at the end of year 11. There are six assessments of one hour, 10 minutes, each with 60 marks and have six questions in each paper. There are two biology papers, two chemistry and two physics, the same for triple. The papers are of equal weighting. Students cannot drop one of the disciplines, which is a question we frequently get asked. The assessments are available at foundation and higher tier. The foundation paper will target grades one to five, where the higher tier will target grades four to nine. There are 16 marks of the paper that will overlap and be found in both tiers. We spend a lot of time over the two years ensuring that the students are entered for the correct tier. And it's a conversation between us and the students and you as parents to ensure that we get it right. Students will receive two GCSE qualifications. This GCSE qualification will be graded and certificated on a 17 grade scale from 9-9 down to 1-1. Now this is very different from the A star to E that some of you may be used to. Individual papers are not graded. So the top grade is a 9-9, they could then get a 9-8, they can get an 8-8 eight, eight, or an 8-7, eight, seven, a 7-7 seven, seven, or a 7-6, etc. They can't get a 9 and a 4. The assessments will include a mixture of different question styles, including multiple choice, short answer questions, calculations and extended opening response. There are four skills that we focus on when we are teaching and that will be examined in the papers. They are application of knowledge, so this is where students not only are taught the information, but they then have to learn to apply it to a situation that may not be completely familiar with. And that is to ensure they fundamentally understand the course. The second one is working scientifically. This is based on the mandatory core practicals. So it is a practical subject and we pride ourselves in doing many practicals. And uh, many that we do are called core practicals. They're ones that the students have to complete. They can watch videos um, as well on top of that, but it's about actually completing them so they remember them and they can uh, really interact uh, with working scientifically. The third type is extended open response, and I'll refer to this a bit later. These are extended questions. These are up to six marks and there will be one, if not two, in each paper. And then mathematical skills. Students have to be able to interpret and construct graphical representation of data. That includes tables to be able to identify trends within data and identify any anomalous results, results that don't quite fit in. How can you help? So if you can promote attendance as you do currently, that would be absolutely brilliant. Obviously, we need the students to be in and then we can teach them. To familiarise yourself with the can-do sheets, you'll see one of these a bit later. These are sheets that we've broken down into everything the students should be able to do by the end of each topic. Encourage consolidation of learning and lessons through uh, many of the free online platforms. There is Seneca, Google Classroom, Oak National Academy, BBC Bite Size and Active Learn. The Active Learn is the textbook uh, that students each have their login for. BBC Bite Size, please ensure that you're using Edexcel. Oak National Academy, we will uh, signpost you to the specific lessons through Google Classroom. And Seneca, uh, the students will be given access to the correct course and the students can work through that. You can see their uh, progress as they go through also. 
Also, can you please uh, promote the uh, effective use of CGP revision guides? All students who purchase these will have access to them. Uh, they are very specific. They are uh, at Excel and they show them exactly what they need to learn. There is also a workbook that goes alongside them and the answers are also available. If you could review their Google Form assessments, so they're getting many Google Forms that they can go through and the answers are released just after, so making sure they uh, highlight the air of weakness and then improve. The end of topic assessments um, are key to us, our key data. And at the end of these, we complete a bar chart to try and highlight which questions they did really well with and which questions they need to go ahead and work on. And we ask that you look at these and celebrate their strengths and support them uh, improving their weaknesses again through the online platforms and communicate with us. Please, if you need any, if you've got any questions, uh, just get in contact and let us know if there's any, if the students are struggling, then again, get, please get in contact so that we know we want to work as a team. I referred to the can do sheets earlier, and this is what you can see currently on screen. So they consist of, to the left hand side, they have all of the statements that the student need to know. You can see that some are in normal writing and some are in bold. The ones that are in bold are for higher tier. Each statement has been taken from the LXL specification. Each states clearly what the student should be able to uh, do by the end of teaching. These enable your child to progress um, and to keep a track of where they're at. Also, it lets them highlight if they've missed something and they can come back to us. There are four additional columns on top of that, each requiring a date of completion. The first one is when they're taught it. The second one is when they've learnt it. Uh, the third one is when they've gone over it. And the fourth one is when they've committed it to memory. So a date should be in the boxes on the right hand side. On the screen now, you can see a whole class feedback sheet. After reviewing all of their books, we go through and we compile this and take a long time to really make sure we're targeting the areas of weakness and celebrating the wonderful things that they are doing. All the tasks from these sheets are completed in purple pen in their book. So this is definitely an area that you can uh, support us with by having a look in their book. You should see these about every three weeks. So top left, you can see that that's where we celebrate. We put their initials and we celebrate the things that they are doing really well. To the right, uh, top right, there is a, a task that is based on numeracy or literacy. In this case, it's literacy. We often ask the students to put words into sentences. This really helps us understand that they understand the context with, with, with which it's come and making sure it's a scientific context as opposed to from a different subject. We, uh, we celebrate the work that they've done. We correct common errors uh, in spelling. We draw upon and correct uh, misconceptions. The left, uh, one of the left boxes, um, there are sometimes misconceptions that are made. A frequent one being breathing and respiration are the same thing. They are not. And we try and address them here and, try and give an activity which uh, breaks this and makes them understand why it's not true. And then on the bottom right is the content that has been covered. At the bottom of the sheet, there will be a challenge question for them to do. And as you said, all of these activities should be done in purple. So it's very visual for you to see in their book. If you see a green sheet with no purple pen, it'd be very easy just to say, why don't we get a couple of these activities done? Not only teaching content is really important to us and we, get, we complete this, it's actually breaking down of questions. So this is called exam technique. Students can understand every single thing in the course, but when it comes to a question, not understand what the exam board are asking. We understand that. And therefore we spend a lot of time throughout the whole course breaking down questions to show them how to answer it and how to understand what they're actually asking and then achieve all of the marks. A classic question for science is often about graphs, trying to inter interpret a graph. And we encourage students to take a while just to have a look at it, to draw on it, to try and work out what it's actually asking. The joy with graphs, what I find the joy with graphs, is all the answers pretty much there. You just have to be able to extract them. And that takes skills, and they're skills that we work on. So let's go back to our do now. So answers that we would expect for this, um, and we often elicit from students are, 
words like virus and vaccine and transmission and pathogen, cause, effect and increase. Obviously, this is a very topical uh, subject to talk about, which is brilliant, which means actually students can, can ask questions. If we wanted them to link it, maybe they'd start, to start talking about why that it is, might be airborne or what they know about it, the understanding of airborne, what they understand by vaccinations, or even the right reliability of data. They, they'll know about drug development. They've experienced so much over the last 18 months. We give them the opportunity in this task to actually talk about it. So our specification goals are to develop scientific knowledge and conceptual understanding through the three disciplines. To develop understanding of the nature, processes and methods of science through different types of scientific inquiry that help them to answer scientific questions about the world around them. Science is always going to affect them, and so it's important that they have an understanding. Develop and learn to apply observational, practical, modelling, inquiry and problem-solving skills in the lab, in the field, in other learning environments. Develop their ability to evaluate claims based on science through critical analysis of the methodology, of evidence, of conclusions, both qualitatively and quantitatively. This is so significant. We teach the students to ask why? Why has this happened? What have we learned? Why should we do this? How, how is this affecting me? How can we move forward from this? So thank you for listening. Uh, this has been the combined science course which all students will take unless they opt for triple. If you have any questions, both myself and uh, Ms. Demon, our emails at the bottom of the screen currently, feel free to contact.